Welcome to example number seven. In this question, we have a motorist, which is the, the car that you can see in the diagram below. And this motorist is traveling at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second, but passes a school crossing uh, where the speed limit is actually 10 meters per second. Hence, he's speeding. And nearby is a police officer who's on a motorcycle, is stopped and registers the speed of this car who's speeding. So the police officer hence accelerates in pursuit of the speeding car. Eventually, the police officer will catch up to the motorist. So our question is asking, how long will it take the police officer to catch up to him? What is the speed of the police officer when he catches up to him? And um, how far did he actually travel? Let's say that the beginning is where the school crossing is, and that's where the police officer is. How far in distance uh, will it take until he reaches uh, the same position as the car? This is a quite a complex question, but I think it's a really good question. Okay, our first step in this kind of problem is to visualize the problem and to draw a diagram, which is already shown for you. After a diagram is drawn, we should choose an appropriate coordinate system. And this is actually shown for you too. You can see it's going positive to the right. We should also choose an appropriate origin. And that's shown over here where the sign is. In the sketch that you can see, you see a later point in time where the motorcyclist has taken off and is accelerating to the right. And the car is moving along at a constant velocity of 15 meters per second. Not shown, but at some point later on, maybe over here or something, the police officer will catch up to the car and they will both have the same position. And this is key in linking the motion of both officers when we solve the problem. Before we start to solve the problem, I'd like to organize all of the known and unknown information in this problem. And because there's two different types of motion, there's the accelerated motion of the police officer, and then there's the constant velocity motion of the car, I'd say a good idea would be to organize them separately into two tables. Okay, so we're going to put the police officer known and unknown information over here, and then the motorist and the car information over here. Let's start off with the position. More specifically, let's talk about the initial position. So what's the initial position of the police officer at time t equals zero? Well, I think it would be ideal to put the origin here and say that's where the motorcyclist was when the speeding car was just passing him and he registered him. So the initial position of the police officer is zero and also the speeding car is as well at time t equals zero, zero meters too. Then later on, when the police officer catches up to the car somewhere over here, the position of the police officer is going to be just labeled as X sub P. And the position of the car will be labeled as X sub C. So I'll just put a question mark on both of these. We don't know what that is. That's what we're looking for later on. Then we have the initial velocity. What's the initial velocity of the police officer? So I'll write velocity of the police officer initially, or at time t equals zero. Well, remember that the motorcycle is stopped at the corner just as the car passes by going at 15 meters per second. So his initial velocity is zero meters per second. What about the police, uh, sorry, the car? The car is traveling at initial velocity of 15. In fact, it's actually going to be the same as its final velocity because it's continuing at the constant velocity throughout the problem. All right, that means that for the velocity of the car at the end is also 15 meters per second. The velocity of the police officer, do we know what that is going to be when he catches up to the car? No. In fact, that's what we're going to be asked to do, I believe, in uh, part B. So that's part B here. All right, and then what else do we have? The acceleration. The acceleration of the police officer is given as three meters per second squared. What's the acceleration of the car? 
Well, the velocity is not changing. Remember, the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And there is no change in velocity. Therefore, the acceleration must be 0. So there's no acceleration for the motor. So he's going at constant velocity. And lastly, um, what time will it take for them to reach the police officer to reach the car? We'll just label that as t. We don't know what that is. And that is the same t here because it'll be at the same position at the same time. Actually, I've just given you another major hint here. If they're going to be, when they catch up to each other somewhere over here, both the police officer will be at that same location and so will the car. Therefore, the position of the police officer and the position of the motorist are the same at this time t. Now that we've identified all of the knowns and unknowns in the problem, we can start to look at the kinematics equations and choose an appropriate equation. Remember, when the police officer catches up to the car, they're both going to have the same position. So this is a key thing that we're going to be using. So ideally, we would probably want to look for an equation that involves an x in it. Probably a time, possibly, because we eventually have to find the time. Um, you could use, say, velocities, but if you notice for the motorist here, the initial velocity and the final velocity are the same, so that's not really going to be very helpful. Uh, take a look. What do you think would be appropriate? Uh, you don't know, for example, the final velocity of the police car as well. All right, I'm going to take a stab and try and to use the equation number two here. Let's write the equation up for the police officer. The final position of the police officer would be the initial position of the police officer plus the initial velocity of the police officer times t plus 1 half times the acceleration of the police officer times t squared. We know that the initial position is 0 at time t equals 0. It's at the origin. We also know that the police officer starts from rest. And so you have the x of the police officer is, and let's go ahead and substitute so we know which things are unknown here, 1 half times the acceleration of the police officer, which is 3, I'll leave out the units for now, t squared. So the x for the police officer is really just 1.5 t squared. So I have two unknowns, the position and the time. It means I need a second equation. Now, earlier I mentioned that we're going to try to link the motion of the police officer to the motion of, of the car. There's some point that relates these their kinematics equations. And this is the key idea right here. So let's try to write the position function for the motorist now. We'll write out the full equation for that. So the same equation as this, but we'll have different cancellations in some ways. You have the initial position is zero, just like it was for the police officer. But the acceleration now is 0 because it's not accelerating. And let's substitute. We have x sub t c for car is equal to the velocity of the car, which is 15 times t. But remember that the position of both of them will be the same when they catch up to each other, or when the police officer catches up to the motorist. So we're going to set this equation for the police officer to be equal to the one for the car. So we have 1.5 t squared is equal to 15 times t. Then we have 1.5 t squared minus 15 t equals 0. Take out a common denominator of t, and we have 1.5 t minus 15 equals 0. And this yields two solutions. t equals 0, or uh, 1.5 t minus 15 equals 0, or t equals 10 seconds. We're not in this interested in the initial time where they're both at the same position, but the final time when, they, when the police officer catches up to the car, and that's at 10 seconds. Okay, what else do we need to find out? We're also asked to find the velocity of the police officer. So the final velocity of the police officer is the initial velocity of the police officer plus the acceleration of the police officer times time. Substituting in, we have zero for the acceleration here. And then, uh, or the velocity and the acceleration is uh, 3, and the time is 10. So this final speed of the police officer is 30 meters per second. And we're also asked for the position where the police officer catches up with the motorist. It doesn't matter. You could use this equation or this equation. It should give you the same thing. Remember, the police officer's position is the same as the car, which is 15 times t. 
So the position of the police officer would be 15 times 10, which is a position of 150 meters. And there you go for the problem. There are things that you could notice, by the way. Uh, look at the velocity of the police officer. It's 30 meters per second. He's definitely not going the same speed as the actual car that was speeding at 15 meters per second. So even though they had the same position, which we indicated over here, at the same time, they did not have the same velocity. Also, which I erased when I started the problem, is the graph over here that I've just made visible. This graph kind of shows you uh, what's happening in their motion. The equation for the motorist right here is really, if you look at this on the y-axis, x as a function of time is really just 15 times t. And then the police officer, uh, this curve looks like a parabola, which it is, x as a function of time here is, I believe when we solved it, uh, 1 half a t squared, the acceleration was 3, so it was 1.5 t squared. And so by setting these two functions, this is the function for the car, and this is the function for the police officer, they, you're really looking for the intersection of this line and this parabola right here. And so you found that the intersection point of those two things. Okay, and that's it for example 7.